what's up guys it is oh i gotta fix my camera real quick it's been a while since we've had a live stream here on youtube and it is officially tackle tuesday and of course now people are blowing my phone up This one's kind of important, though. It's uh, Kelly Jordan, who uh, just wrapped up the Major League Fishing event there on uh, Table Rock, sending me a nice little photo of him uh, doing his live stream there with Major League Fishing. Um, so I, uh, I apologize for the lack of content lately. I've been really, really busy. Uh, with work and other stuff. Let me see if I can get some side light coming in over here. And uh, so I haven't had an opportunity to really make a bunch of videos and whatnot, but that opportunity is probably going to change uh, this week, next week. I'm going to uh, pick week next week. It's going to go this week, but the weather is going to be really tough, so I'm going to bow out of that. Uh, but I should be going up here on Kentucky Lake and getting some videos but uh uh gonna have three live streams tonight including this one so um um i've got uh matt robertson mr onum qualified for the bass master classic well matt's a good friend of mine and he's coming on the show thursday night at six o'clock we're gonna stream on youtube and facebook uh at the same time uh, Matt just won almost $20,000 on Kentucky Lake this weekend. He won the Triton Owners Tournament and the USA Big Bass Bash. So, um, really excited for uh, for Matt. And he's going to tell us some ways to catch these big bass in the summer. Um, uh, when you're fishing these big bass events. And uh, talk about how he approaches mentally and uh, gear up when he's going to go fish these tournaments like a Triton owners that's a three fish limit versus a five fish limit uh, i know he's a big swim bait guy but he's also really good with the big worm big crank bait and uh he's not he's going to give some stuff away um but uh he's not going to get too many secrets but matt's a funny guy good dude and he knows his stuff so i'm really excited to get matt up on uh, the live stream um Man, I just I had the sh I don't really have any new shirts. I've just got the the original Jank shirts, and uh, those are in uh, the link there in the description on on the videos. Uh, it's a spread shirt link. Uh, I really need some to get time to design some new ones and, and some ideas. I really like just a derby jersey shirt. That's what needs to say, you know, my derby jersey, and just maybe white with black tack. So, what's up, Tom? Uh, yeah, the ledge bite's getting pretty good out here. Um, I had a video about magnum flukes with nail weights. What was the video name? I want to watch again. I, I don't remember doing a video over magnum flukes with nail weights. What's up, James? Dustin Taylor, what is up, my man? So, uh, a few things before we get started. You know, I had somebody ask me about, uh... Uh, my website I haven't updated in like four months well I'm fixing to start back I, I that was a great idea and I've totally slacked on that so I'm gonna try to start once or twice a week whether it's an article or a view or blog I really want to get that going but I've got some good things in the works um, I am probably going to be starting to produce content for a, a major website I don't want to let it out the bag yet but I've agreed to start producing video content and uh it's going to be cool and uh mostly centered around baits uh but some other really cool stuff you know like factual information uh with anglers and baits and stuff like that and uh let's just say it's a big deal it's not wired to fish but it's more up my alley because it's more uh creator centered and uh everybody that joins this show probably subscribes to the email let's just say it's a blast and uh, I'll be working on that soon I'm really excited about that I'm gonna try to knock some content out this week uh, I want to let you guys know I want to feature you guys uh, fish catches every Saturday night when I do Saturday Night Live so if you've caught any jaints 
Um, hit me up on social media. Send me a photo. Uh, I want to put all the janks of the week you guys catch. Uh, show off your fish catches. Let me know what you caught them on. Uh, we'll do that at the beginning of the show. Show off all the all the janks from everybody. What's up, Brett? What's up, Brad? Yeah, I got to meet Mr. Brad McClure this weekend at Bass Pro Shops in Nashville, and uh, he is an excellent guy. You know, it's always cool to meet your subscribers and, and people watch your stuff, and me and Brad's got a lot of mutual friends we found out, and uh, we share a lot of great fishing information between us, and uh, it's something that uh, I'm really uh, I'm really excited to go, go meet uh Brad again, he told me I can get in, get in his boat anytime. So when I'm in the Nashville area, I think I'm going to take him up on that. And he got to meet Bateman Jr., who told me he wanted to be on the show tonight, but he's stuck playing Fortnite. So, but guys, I got I got a ton of baits. Uh, I got some new stuff that I picked up at Bass Pro Shop um, because a lot of you guys ask questions about baits and stuff, and I didn't have any, and they had some good deals. I'm not going to lie, a lot of people get Bass Pro Shop some flack they had a really good selection now they didn't have no six cents there at nashville so but speaking of six cents the new bait man uh ledge box gonna try to roll that out friday so it'll be available uh saturday man i've been seeing lots of people hashtag jank lately i tell you what my eyebrow uh my unibrow could be considered a jank too right now you know what, Nick? Uh, believe it or not, uh, on most things I bought, I was checking prices on Tackle Warehouse. They were within 10, 15 cents. Now, uh, their Berkeley Powerbait stuff was like two dollars and fifty cents higher. If you don't know, Tackle Warehouse is running a great sale on Berkeley Powerbait and Max Scent stuff right now. You can get uh, ten-inch power worms for like three dollars and ninety-nine cents a bag. It's something dirt cheap. Um, but, um, uh, for the most part, the Bass Pro Shop in Nashville, their prices don't seem too ridiculous. But, uh, let's get on with it. Let's, let's, let's look at all these baits I got. So I got a giant care package in, uh, from Hog Farmer Bait Company. And then I got stuff from Black Dog Bait Company. And then we'll go over what I grabbed up here at, uh, Bass Pro Shop. So, Let's just start with that. So, I posted this on Instagram, and this is the Hog Farmer Hog Wobbler, and this is the Spunk Shad, which the Spunk Shad is basically kind of like a Kitek, but with a really straight tail. One thing cool that Scott's doing now uh, with his Hog Wobblers, and I don't know if you can see that, uh, it looks, I mean, this is lead, but he's painting these uh, Hog Wobblers to kind of match... Uh, the spunk shad. So this is kind of like a. Let's look at the package. See if it says what color. I mean, he sent me a whole bag of these things. He knows I'm going to pick wet. And uh, this is kind of like. I want to say like that pro blue, but it's more of like a a blue shad. It's got that blue hue on the back, a silver belly. Well, this hog wobbler is actually uh, painted to match that. And this is basically your, your scrounger style head. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of here and show you guys what's cool about the hog wobbler. So one, it's got a really good stout hook, but it's got this little bait keeper right here. So it's going to keep your spunk shad or jerky J or whatever you want to put up on there. What's also cool is when you get down fishing these scroungers, um, What's very important on these things is the bill. So if the bill gets warped or overheats or anything, it can really affect the action on the bait. So when you get down fishing a scrounger, and Jason Lambert's talked about this, he actually takes his bills off. Is all you gotta do is fold this thing backwards like that. And then you can, ow, don't hit your thumb on the hook point. And you can actually pull the bill off and you can store it separate. And believe it or not, if you're hurting for a swim bait hook, you can use this right here. But uh, <clears throat> to put these on, all you do is wet that, thread it over the eye of the hook here, and then you'll pull that plastic right down onto the head. And then what I do is just spin it, 
and then pop it forward and your hog wobbler is ready to go now uh, I actually use a snap on here and, and, and you know Scott he has a bunch of heavy-duty snaps and split rings and they're available on his site as well so he sent me a big pack of those uh, split rings uh, these are great no janks gonna straighten these things out what's up Frank Hazley We have got to get together, Frank. I haven't seen you in like a year, buddy. What's up, Tony? Well, MG, not everybody watching this feed is on Kentucky Lake. And, you know, the shad spawn is starting up in other areas of the country. And uh, a scrounger is a good way to catch fish in a sh shad spawn. I'll actually downsize to a smaller one and use a smaller bait. And you can catch a lot of fish like that. And uh, Alex Rudd did a really good video today. I watched it this morning on Monster Bass about fishing the shad spawn. So that's the spunk shad. And uh, I've had a lot of guys tell me they love these things. And he also makes a Ned Rig bait. But he sent me a couple new colors. This one's really cool. This is kind of like a, a rainbow shad. Some silver flake, blue flake whatnot I really really like that color right there especially for my clear water sunny days that would be a killer killer one what's up bass and panda what's up Rob Let's see what else uh, Scott sent me I mean he loaded me up with spunk sheds Tennessee magic that's a cool one if you guys that like that green shed jerky J this is a going to be a, a pretty good one kind of like a, a green pumpkin back silver belly gold flake maybe florida guys the scottsboro scrounger is pretty good uh so you had a hard bill and soft bill uh the warmer the water uh, i like a harder bill or he bigger the bait i like a stiffer bill smaller bait like a soft bill that cold water you'll like that soft bill man blake has been hammering them james yep so these are all hog farmer baits uh i'm 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 trying to get with scott we're gonna get worked out where guys that uh are subscribers on the channel when y'all watch here just like six cents y'all get a special code uh to save some money on some hog farmer stuff and a link um right now you just go to his website let him know the bait man sent you and uh he'll get you taken care of but one thing i told scott he needed to do is get a dark color spunk shad for us chatterbait fishermen and now we have a black and blue spunk shad uh this is pretty awesome uh great for your chatterbait guys fishing dirty water also makes a smaller ones if you want to put them on ned rigs uh, for fishing dirty water really really like this this is this is going to be good. It's going to be great on the back of your jackhammer, your thunder cricket. And uh, for my nighttime guys that fish night spinner baits, I think this would be a really cool night spinner bait trailer. That's just me. Yeah, dude. Scott's a, a good dude, man. He, he is different. But I don't mean different bad. He's different as in he's an outside the box thinker. Maybe I can go to back a rack with you. Just maybe. Uh, that's something I, I want to talk to to uh, Mike and Bullshad and Scott. Like, man, can you get me over to Mexico? We could make some killer videos. Speaking of six cents, how's the sensory rod? Uh, MG, yeah, it's 3.5 inch. It's pretty small. I might have some in this box. Um, the sensory rod, I'll be honest with you, uh, it's probably my favorite rod right now. Um, and I say that because I've been using it for a lot of different applications. Uh, I'm skipping a jig, swimming a jig. Yes, I can actually skip a jig. Um, I've been throwing small Texas rigs on it, finesse jigs. Um, I've thrown a spinner bait on it, a chatter bait, and it's a really good rod. And what I like about it is it's got good tip that loads up, make, and I can make accurate casts, but it's super light and very, very comfortable. Probably one of the most comfortable rods I've ever put in my hand. Um, now, I've been using some new rods from Douglas Outdoors. Uh, they're based in Washington and testing them out, mostly swim bait rods. 
uh, designed for bigger uh, stuff like trash fish and osprey and I threw this big eight inch mag draft someone was asking what that was I've been throwing this big eight inch mag draft on that big Douglas seven foot nine rod and I really like it they're nice and light and they're sensitive um, and then I've been using my sticks rods and the dial rods but I'm really impressed with that six cent sensory rod and a matter of fact I was throwing a zoom swimmer on the seven one medium heavy moderate fast uh, at Lake X and dude that rod is sweet for small paddle tails it's just very versatile so dude uh, I'd love to come fish the chick I just gotta find some time man uh, like I said uh, I'm working on a few things maybe I would slide out of the window building industry in the next couple months but I've got to get this channel back to where it was I slacked off on the video um, but hopefully some new partnerships and other stuff coming up. We're going to get there. Yeah, thanks guys. If you hit the thumbs up for me, I'd really appreciate it. So, yeah, Frank, I, I'm, I can't wait to get to Pickwick. But So, uh, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to probably do a giveaway this weekend. And we're going to include some hog farmer stuff. He sent me way more than this right here. Um... So if you didn't know, uh, he also makes a badass underspin, and this is called the War Pig. And believe it or not, I know some guys that are actually catching them on Chickamauga right now on this War Pig, which is this is his underspin, and it has a very stout hook. It's got this round bullet head and these big eyes on there. I don't know if you can see that real well, but the one cool thing he Scott does, he paints the blade on that. And it's got premium components on this. This is a high dollar swivel. And he's actually got a swivel built into the head right there. So this is actually turning. Um, so that blade's going to spin at very, very slow speed. So I know what a lot of guys do are doing. They're actually putting that spunk shad on the underspin. It's the craziest thing uh, I was told by a guy that's got a pretty good YouTube channel. And I know you guys watch it. Uh, but I, I won't let him put that out there, not me, because uh, it's his deal. And he said, dude, I'm putting the spunk shad on the back of that war pig, and it looks like it would do nothing, but it's so subtle. Uh, these fish, I think, they think it's just a dying shad, and they just engulf it. But uh, this war pig goes all the way up to three-quarter ounce, and you can get them with a four-aught hook. Uh, so this is a sweet underspin right here. I really like these. And, you know, when Scott builds something, he builds it with quality. So he's like the Toyota of fishing. Maybe a little bit more expensive on the front end, but, you know, you get what you pay for. I've got so much stuff in my bait room. This thing is getting out of hand. Oh, goodness. Scott sent me some more heavy-duty snaps. And you can order components from Hog Farmer's website. Yeah, man, Nichols, Nichols Paints Blades. I think Nichols uh, is a very underrated company, man. Uh, Brooks is a good guy, but they don't make anything bad. And they make some awesome spinner baits. They got a really good night spinner bait. So Scott sent me plenty of these. Check out this one out. I don't know if you can tell. It's got a little pink eye on it. And uh, it's got some pink dust on that blade. So that one's really, really cool. I tell you what I need. I'm gonna have to get old Bart from Bass Mafia to send me some more boxes, or else I'm gonna be like swimming in baits. Yes, uh, he does make a hair jig uh, with the underspin. And believe it or not, let's. Uh, I'm gonna get on a uh, Hog Farmer's website real quick. I'm gonna show you guys something. Let's see if I can find it here. Oh, that's screenshots from last week. Um. Well, on the Hog Farmer website, he's actually got some some hair jig underspin. It's like a hog tie underspin, but there's some sales on some purple shad hair jigs. They're like six bucks. So y'all might want to jump on that because if y'all don't, I'm gonna jump on it as soon as I get done with the stream. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah, some more spunk shads, but. And again, dark color, you green pumpkin guys. Again, chatterbaits, bladed jigs. 
Now you got go something with your green pumpkin right here. What's up, Charlie? Man, I'm fixing to go to work myself. Fixing to go to work myself. But they're feeding me tonight. And I'm really excited that I don't have to buy my lunch. So, more spunk sheds. Look at it. A white ice color. Oh, man, I like that a lot. And then, he's got a really clear one called Ghost Minnow. And I like this one a whole lot. Because I like me some translucent stuff. But it's kind of like the blue gizzard on top. Look at that. How awesome is this color spunk shad right there? That is the one. I, that's probably the one I'd go throw at Pickwick right now. Because that's going to look like a bait fish. Just sick. I've been using it as a spinnerbait trailer, believe it or not. It doesn't do anything crazy. Uh, but... Let's see if I can find it over here. Just... So this is kind of my spinnerbait. I've thrown a lot this year. This is a spot sticker spinnerbait. And uh, I've got that spunk shad. That's the three inch model uh, behind it. <clears throat> and I've got that spunk shad back there. And the cool thing about spot sticker, I love how he cuts his skirt. So it's a compact and fluffy. And you put that little... Um, spunk shed behind it and you've got this cool trailer don't do crazy in the water but it really gets that bait fish profile and uh, this thing's gotten eat several times this is actually a three-quarter ounce it's a spot sticker um, shad head spinner bait right there oh, hang that up so I don't lose it I have not made a hair jig video yet uh, hopefully I get to make one next week I've I've lost a bunch of hair jigs. Um, I've actually got a local kid here that ties some up for me. He's a really good dude. Um, and then I use a Nichols hair jig. And I use Hog Farmer's hair jig. So uh, Scott makes several different kinds. He makes a stand-up hair jig, which, you know what? I just happen to have one right here. So Scott did send me some hair jigs. And uh, this one is the stand-up. And what makes it cool, I always hate taking these out. They're hard to get. So if you look at the, this is a big hair jig. So this is going to imitate a giant uh, gizzard falling. Uh, you're going to target big bass with this hair jig. And, but what's cool about this hair jig is, number one, it's got, it's, I mean, this is giant. But <clears throat> it's got premium uh, uh, big feathers in it. Um got some synthetic hair and some strands but they're tied really really good i don't know if you can see uh the tie on that thing right there with the camera fit a focus 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 camera focus there you go but that head right here is flat so when this bait falls it's going to stand straight up on the bottom and this hair really poof out so you get a little bit of a reaction by so i really like a teardrop style for the way I fish, but there are a lot of guys that like to stroke that hair jig straight up and down and let it sit on the bottom, and that right there is the way to go. Um, when I'm fishing a teardrop style or like a shad hair style, I'm getting more bites as it bait falls, not as it's on the bottom, but that is a huge, huge hair jig. Uh, those are on his site, and the guys always ask me what color, and I said white or some version of white. So uh, I will throw something like this right here. It's got some gray in it when I'm in some really clear water because uh, that white just pops off so much. I'll, that gray seems to shrink the size of the bait a little bit you know, visually. Um, now I done lost um, my wrapper for my hair jig. So I'm going to have to set this guy up top here for a little bit. But uh, Hog Farmer really was famous uh, for his A-Rigs and his original hog tie hair jig. So, yeah, it looks like a rooster. I'm going to open that link. Uh-oh. Something just happened. I lost my chat. I'll get it back though. Let's 
get this chat popped out here. I accidentally clicked somebody's link in the chat room. Oh, I just had to reopen it. I hate to fly through this tonight, but I got to be at work at like 8 o'clock, so... But dude, Scott sent me some more stuff. I'm really excited about the terminal stuff he sent me. Um... Here we go. Here we go. Woo! We're back. I think we're back. Chat room is back. If y'all ever seen the setup I've got, I basically got a laptop and I've got this program where I can control the split screens and I've got a mic and then I got a webcam and I keep the chat over here. And then I keep my phone down here in case people text me. Because believe it or not, some people are watching and they'll text me. And I've had people call me in the middle of a show. I'm like, hey man, I'm watching your show and you've got this bait. And I'm like, well, I really can't stop and answer the phone. So just text me. So, But we have fun. I don't care. Um, so what else I got in here? Oh yeah. So... I know you guys really like fishing big worms. I like fishing big worms. Well, Scott makes an awesome head for throwing big worms out there. Let's see if I grab, I can grab a big worm here. Just for example, the old Strike King bull worm. So this is the eight inch one, the eight inch bull worm. And then Scott makes this awesome stand-up head, and uh, what's really cool, all you gotta do is uh, push your worm up, up onto the hook. This is a heavy one. This is like a three-quarter ounce one, and it's got, I believe, it has a six-aught hook, which is great for this eight-inch bull worm. Uh, I'm usually a guy that uses some light, shaky heads, but I'm gonna start using some bigger ones. And all you gotta do is run that through right there. And so this will make this guy stand up. It's basically like dragging your big shaky head or big worm on a big football. And what's really cool about this head, number one, if y'all can see that, it's really flat right here. So it's kind of kind of like a football head, but it's flat. But one thing I like, and this is one thing I like on my football jigs, you see that? It's a recessed tie. Uh, so that's going to protect that's going to keep you from actually getting hung up. Uh, what it do is it's dragging and you're pulling it to flip this thing over. Um, my hookup ratio is really good uh, with these recessed line ties. It, it kind of keeps your knot protected too. It's not way out there overexposed, but I like these big old shaky heads right here. And that's an eight inch bull worm uh, with that on there. And that color is called bull bluegill. I use this color quite a bit, but you know, Scott makes these shaky heads in several different colors, uh, like he does everything. Uh, see what all he sent me in here. He sent me a big giant one ounce with an eight aught hook. So this is a big heavy duty one. If you're going to throw some big jank worms, probably like this. So this is kind of the original, one of the original big, big worms. This is the Excite Maximus worm, big straight tail. And you've got to have a pretty good hook for this. So that eight aught hook, let's look at this thing. That is huge. I mean, that's a tuna gaff. But if you're around big bass, around the jaints, you got to upgrade your equipment sometimes. And when you're fishing deep, 25, 30 foot, and there's current, you'll probably want that one ounce. So, again, screw that up there. You just push your worm right up onto the hook. And you've got a giant, giant shaky head for a giant worm. So, these big 10, 12 inch straight tails, you can get away with that big 8 aught hook. Uh, it's not going to go crazy. It's right up there where it needs to be. Now, I will say the only downside of these big, heavy hooks is you've got to get the hook into them. So you're going to have to use a big, heavier rod than uh, what I would normally use for a worm. I'd go up to like a 7.5 heavy, 7.6, 7.8, uh, 
something like that just so you can drive that when you upgrade that line to heavier line you're going to have to go 15 to 20 pound test just you don't want to break your line on a hook set but these things right here uh, these are nice I would like to put a big old Cinco on it. I think that'd be wicked. So, but that is the Magnum Shaky from Hog Farmer, and you know, use whatever worm you want to. Uh, you can um, use the bull worm. Uh, you can use the Maximus worm. Uh, Six Cents has got a new worm coming out. If you guys haven't seen, and I'm really excited about it. Um, any of those big round. Uh, worms will work. Uh, one I really like, and I don't talk about a lot, is the Upton's Custom Worm, which is what inspired the Strike King Bullworm and all that. I have not used the Fighter Hair Jig. I'm not a big, uh, small hair jig guy. Judd, uh, you just asked a great question. Do I fish a Tokyo rig? Uh, I've got some. I haven't fished it yet. I'm really excited about it. I'm going to try to do some of that. I'm going to modify mine for fishing out on the drops. kind of, And I feel like I could fish that like a fast Carolina rig. Really com compact. Just kind of drag it on the bottom and stop it. Uh, feeling all that stuff. So, see what else Scott sent me. Uh, a Chartreuse bladed war pig. That thing right there is sick. Some little A-rig heads. I'll just get the box out here. More hog wobblers. You know I like this one. This one's got a little purple tint to it. You can't really see it in there. Hog wobblers. Golly. I gotta put all this stuff I'm taking out back in the box. More war pigs. Alright, so he did send me this. And I'm gonna need to get a um, I'm gonna have to get me an assistant for this, but this is something cool that I've had for a while. Uh, these are the Hog Farmer uh, stand-up swim bait heads. So I'm just going to use uh, this Kitech as an example. You can use anything you want to. But what's cool about these, oh man, my PC's about to die. I'm going to have to go get uh, my plug. So what's cool about these, on these stand-up swim bait heads, when you rig it, man, this Kitech is stiff. You just push your bait up like normal, push it right through. And what's cool is how that bait goes right below that. So... You can fish this like a normal swim bait head, but what's cool is when this bait falls, it stands up. So what a lot of guys like about this head is when you're reeling on the bottom, it just kind of roots around. And, and this thing's going to deflect off cover and whatnot. This is a great head for really slow rolling swim bait. Or, on this lake, a lot of guys will throw that swim bait and it'll fall. They'll let it fall straight down. So when it hits the bottom, it's going to sit there like nose down. And it'll make a couple reels and hop it straight up, and then it'll fall right back down. Well, with that head, it's always going to land this head down in that position, and the hook is always going to be up. And that's important because a lot of uh, swim bait heads, when your swim bait falls, it lays right over on its side. Well, this one's up, that fish comes, gets it, boom, he's hooked. I really like these swim bait heads, they look good, they got a really sharp hook in it. Love the hook keeper. Uh, very versatile. You can use it with a lot of different um, swim baits. Uh, Kitech, obviously, this is a 5.8. Uh, you can use it uh, with the Scottsboro swim baits, um, the Ignite swim baits, any of those. You do want a good solid head for that uh, keeper to, to work. But really love the stand up swim bait heads from Hog Farmer. I am going to go. Uh, I'm fixing to go, yeah, these things hold the swim bait on because I'm having trouble getting this guy to take off. I think I'm going to donate this one to, to my son. I got to go get my battery charger for my laptop because I thought it was charged, but evidently it's dead. So I will be right back. 
Or, hey, Brittany, yeah. can you bring me my charger for my laptop? The bait wife is going to go grab my laptop charger. So, how sweet is she? So, that's what I got from Hog Farmer Bait Company. Uh, so, we're, I'm going to go through this, and uh, we're going to have to do another Hog Farmer giveaway. There's just too much stuff in here for me. Thank you. My wife can't even bring me my charger because I've got too much, too many baits in here. Let's get this thing hooked up so we can keep on rolling. Uh, what size is that hook? It's a six aught hook uh, in the three quarter and half, but it, he actually makes it with up to an eight aught hook if you want to put it in some big magnum uh, seven eight inch swim baits. There we go. Battery is good now on the laptop. Woo. Um, I'm going to get all this stuff out of the way real quick, and we're going to go through another package that I got from Black Dog Bait Company. Didn't expect to get all this stuff from them either. If you guys got any questions, just go ahead and let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, sometimes it gets hectic. Uh, you can use that sipper. Uh, chat function there and uh, you can donate to the stream uh, whether it's 99 cents or 99 dollars it's always appreciated that money goes to help buying baits for the show it also goes to help uh, uh, support upgrades such as new computers parts stuff like that it did go to a water heater one time I don't I've outgrown the bait room. I, if you guys could see the whole thing, um, it would blow your mind. And, and a lot of it is just these companies that support the channel, always taking care of me, taking care of the viewers. Thank you, James. Appreciate it. That's the best $1.99 you've spent today. And uh, I enjoy it when all of you guys join in. And again, I apologize for not being real active the last couple of weeks. And I just had to break down and I had to spend some time uh, with my family because as much as I love fishing tackle and fishing and I'd kind of neglected uh, hanging out with the kids. And, you know, you only get kids once. And I love my little boy. And he'd been wanting to hang out and my daughter, so. And, you know, you got to take care of Mama, too, you know. It was Mother's Day not long ago, so I had to take care of her, and uh, we're good. Speaking of, Father's Day's coming out, so there's, I'm going to try to put a list of sales on uh, my website Friday on thebaitman.com. Six Cents has got a Father's Day sale. Uh, Mystery Tackle Box is going to have some really crazy deals on uh, specialized boxes, uh, discounted for Father's Day. Uh, Shop Carl's is going to do like an additional 10% off uh, for Father's Day. Uh, so Shop Carl's, man, you can get some good stuff cheap. Um, but I will post any kind of Father's Day sales I can on my website, which is dud-baitman.com. Try to do that Friday afternoon. And I might throw an article up there. I, I've been throwing a couple baits and rods that I need to review, and I really need to get that going on. Yes, he is, Shady Banks, and we are fixing to show that out. Yeah, Matt, uh, I bet Birch's Tackle Shop would sell the fire out of that. You have, so this, I want to let you guys know Matt Birch is on here. He's in, I believe, Georgia. He owns a tackle shop called Birch's Tackle Shop. He's always on Facebook, and I, I enjoy uh, seeing his posts, and he carries a lot of the goods. So anytime you're searching for some baits, I know he gets a lot of hard to get Z-Man and Zoom. Uh, Y'all go look him up there on uh, Facebook, Birch's Tackle Shop. Send him a message and send him some business. Good guy. Um, in, in this world, a big conglomerate, giant corporations. He's just a, guy, a, a squirrel trying to get a nut. And uh, he's got the good stuff. So uh, always look him up and tr see if he can't get some stuff for you. Um, yeah, that uh, Ignite swim bait is awesome. Uh, I have a bunch over here. I need to get some of the knocker. And they've got a new one that's very close to the Scottsboro Tackle swim bait. Uh, same mold, different colors. 
I love both guys, and uh, I don't like showing favoritism, but I'll be honest, I, that STC, uh, it's kind of like that old uh, dirt car, run what you brung, and that's what I keep throwing, but uh, uh, the guys over at Ignite are great, great people, and I'm glad to see uh, they've taken that company to the next level, and uh, I love seeing success. You know, a lot of people like to hate on success, uh, but, you know, there's no reason to do that. We should be happy for everybody, so... Um, let's get this black dog bait stuff out real quick. So this is, uh, whew, I gotta get me some drink. I may have to cut the stream off because I'll have to get ready for work soon, but black dog baits, they are OG. So he sent me, he said he'd send me a bait and he's been on the stream before and again. Uh, you know, very blessed that he said, I'm going to hook you up. And I thought, yeah, send me a bait or two. No big deal, man. I love your stuff. And uh, this is an OG wood punker. So this is made of wood. This is the big topwater walking bait that started the Mega Dog, uh, the Big Sammy, all that kind of stuff. These guys had it dialed in now what's cool about this bait if you look it's pretty narrow it's not as wide as a mega dog or you know the evergreen amazon stuff like that it's narrow but it has a totally it has a super wide walk uh this thing doesn't just twitch like this it's like glides way out here then it glides way back here and uh i think he custom painted this for me and uh you can tell the little blue purple some chartreuse in there you did good, man. You did good. And uh, much respect uh, for that. So, the wood punker is a bit of money. I think these range anywhere between 60 to 100 bucks. So, yes, I'm going to put that on some 80 pound braid when I use it. Because I am going to use it. Let's see what else we got here. I'm just going to start laying this stuff on the floor. It is hot in the bait room. I got to get an AC. Dude, I just need a boat, Jamie. <laughs> that's the thing um, what else did we send me so these are cool uh, these are called the Thunderhawk Thundershad and uh, come in this little package but check out that tail I don't know see if I can open this thing real quick I have never seen a swim bait with a tail like this so at first I kind of laughed at it and then I thought you know what there's this Dude, a black dog. He's pretty legit. He does his research. So this is a little small kind of finesse swim bait. And look at that tail. It's like a little bitty hammer. And I was wondering, I said, I wonder if in the water that has a very slow methodical action, kind of like a HUD, but in a small size. And I imagine when the water runs over that, it has some vibration to it, so... I'm really excited about tossing this thing around. It looks really realistic, believe it or not. And that is a, a cool little bait. That is a Thunderhawk shad. And he sent it to me. And I got a few guys I want to uh, send these to. So, yeah, Matt Lurs got the Hammertail shad. Uh, I've got one, but it's way bigger than this. Uh, it's like eight inches long. And my laptop's even getting hot. All right, what else they sent me? Sent me a shirt, some bling bling on the shirt. You know, I like me some t-shirts. A lot of guys love baits. You know what I like getting is t-shirts because then I don't have to go to the store and buy any. So this is a killer bait they sent me. So a lot of guys know uh, Black Dog Baits. There's the Punkers and the G2 Cracker. Um, this little bait I don't talk about. Uh, and it catches me. This is the Shimmy Shad, which is like, it's a soft jerk bait, but guys in California, they punch it. Uh, I'm going to try rigging it up on a scrounger, because I know what it does on an EWG hook around bushes. But this guy right here, awesome on bed and fish, but it will actually have a weird darting action like a fluke as well. Uh, you can rig it on its side. Uh, but it's got a slit right here, you know, for your hook. 
But I'm thinking that you can put this dude right here on a scrounger. And it doesn't have a super, super long tail. But I think on a scrounger, we might put this in some boiling water, soften it up a little bit. This right here would be sick. It'd also be amazing on schooling bass when those big thread fan are coming up schooling. Oh yeah. But uh, the way I caught fish on this in the past is rig it up like a fluke. Uh, no weight on it. And it was thrown around the out outside of the bushes. And that was about three or four years ago. And for about two days, I didn't catch a ton of fish on it, but the ones I caught were giants. Those shad were spawning up around the bushes, and they couldn't resist this thing. This is a really, really cool uh, bait uh, that I've kind of kept in racks, and that's the Shimmy Shad from Black Dog uh, Baits. And their website's blackdogbaits.com. Nothing crazy. You know, he's been on the stream before and said, hey, if you support the bait man, you know, I'll take care of you. Uh, so we'll get something lined up with them and uh, hopefully I can uh, work with those guys a little bit more. I like the craziness. He's got great ideas. I love unique. Uh, these guys are OG. They're pioneers of, of a lot of this stuff. My neighbor's mowing his yard, of course. He mows it every freaking day when I sleep. He is afraid for it to get heavy. He just watched me come over here and goes, Hey, you're streaming on your video? And I didn't say nothing. And so I guess he got, he decided he was going to go mow his yard in the middle of the stream. I'm going to go shut my door here. So if I start sweating like a whore in church, or pardon my French. God dang, I got too much shit in here. Yes, I have used favorite rods, man. Uh, they're pretty good, actually. Uh, I have a 7.5 Lunkers, and I had a big sexy that I let Jason see, like, from Wired to Fish Borrow. So, you'll probably see him do a review on that sometime. Uh, that's a, Actually, I like the big sexy. They're pretty nice rods. The next video in the queue is called World's First Bleeding Bait. Have you seen that? No, I have not. So, all right. So, speaking of the punker... This is the six inch, this is the injected bait. I wish that dude wasn't mowing his yard right now because it makes the video quality look so much worse that I can't keep that door open. So this is the injected punker. So this is, this is a good little color here. This is kind of like a hitch. Let's see if he even put a color name on it. I don't think so. But this one's plastic. It's not wood, but it's still a big bait. Same original design. Uh, I don't think it's quite as narrow as the wood one, but what it does have a bug wood is it's really loud. What would I throw the six cents Mad Dog 150 on? Uh, I've got a seven foot four Dival big top water rod uh, that I handle these injected baits like uh, this big punker. Uh, the Mag Dog, the Mega Dog, and the Mega Bass Mega Dog. Uh, and that's what I throw 7 for. It's kind of like a medium, heavy, moderate, fast. It's not quite a cranking rod. Um, it's more of just a medium, heavy, fast, really. But it's a great rod. And it's got a little bit more backbone. I threw rattle traps on it quite a bit for a while. Um, it's a good topwater rod. These bigger topwaters like this. You're not going to be able to get away with your little 6.6 six, uh, topwater rods, and that's what I love. I love the old Zell Rowland Special topwater. You're going to have to go up to a 7.4 uh, rod, something with a little bit more backbone because they are heavier. If not, your rod's going to load so much, it can put a lot of stress on the backbone, and, and they can break. But I'm going to upgrade my equipment just a bit to throw these big topwater baits uh, on. So then he also sent me some of these guys, and they are really famous for these baits right here. And these are the G2 Shell Crackers. So he sent me a little bone guy. Then he sent me this guy, which is a blood red shell cracker. Man, I wish I had this this spring. 
Uh, so you can uh, fish this like a regular square bill. You can crank it like a crankbait, or you can wake it. The one I'm really excited he sent me is this one right here. It's a red ear. I'm going to pull this one out of the package. So these are four inches long. They're not crazy expensive. They are kind of hard to find sometimes. Uh, and you can throw basically these on uh, your crankbait rod. You know, like what you would throw like a 5, 6 XD. But this thing is sweet. And they got their own little jointed tail in there. So it's kind of like a half swim bait, half crank bait. Uh, guys would consider these what they call a crank down. Uh, but that's the G2 shell cracker. And I really like this little red ear color. But it's got this square bill. You know, guys, the brim spawn is happening. And uh, right here on this lake, the red ear is spawning. I'd love to get around and crank some uh, brim beds around boat docks, crash this into some lay downs. So you kind of get the best of a swim bait and a crank bait. And these have been popular for several, several years. And that's the G2 shell cracker. Now I know he makes a bigger one too. Not quite as popular. It's a six inch for you guys that like some magnums. But these aren't really ex crazy expensive either. I think they're like 20 bucks or something like that. So uh, I think you... You used to could uh, find these on Tackle Warehouse, but I know on this website, Black Dog Baits, just go there. Do that. I know a lot of people have got some really big fish on these G2 shell crackers, so I was really pumped to get those in, Victor. Rod tip actions. That would be a great uh, video. I can just tell you that uh, actions are actually reversed, so. A slower action you're going to get more bend in the uh, tip so if it says a moderate you're going to have more tip a extra fast it's gonna it's, it's it's the speed at which that rod tip rod straightens out extra fast it's gonna be like boing uh, a moderate fast it's gonna kind of do that and then and just a moderate action is a real slow kind of whippy action that's the best way I know how to explain it personally uh, I only use extra fast for like a magnum spoon and stuff like that that I have to drive a huge hook into uh, and I'm using some big heavy stuff for the most part I stick with a fast action rod even flipping uh, I actually kind of like a moderate you now just a, a slower fast action because I've, I've decided I was punching too many holes in fish and not hooking them the extra fast uh, it was just like bam and it, 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 it had so much power in it it was pulling the hooks out of the fish so yeah toxic baits are pretty sweet um, yeah uh, I've tried to get old Vic uh, from fish everything to send me a hater but uh, he doesn't want to send me one and uh, old Vic forgets I used to give him quite a good deal on some rods and reels back in the day and then uh, I said, hey man, send me a hater for my show, blah, 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 I'll pay for it. And he's like, yeah, here you go, price. I'm like, so you want me to pay retail price even though I used to help you out a little bit? Nothing crazy. But I don't mind. Vic's a good dude. He's he's funny as all get out, but uh, he's got a lot of success right now and I'm really excited for him, so I don't mind when I get the money, shell him out some money for a hater. It's a really cool bait. Really cool bait. That red air does look sweet. So, what else did they send me? Uh, they sent me some more of these dang Thunderhawks. Got a little sexy shad Thunderhawk. I wish our lot didn't go to crap. Uh, I like this one. And you may even be able to see it. It is like straight clear. I like this one. You know why? When those fish school and they get those little bitty pin minnows that you can't get them to bite, this would be the deal. Well, uh, they redesigned the console on the Camus boat. Um, unfortunately, means I did not get to go film it. So, I'm going to put these back up. Major shout out, Black Dog Bait Company. 
Uh, I'm going to be doing some cool videos on these. Uh, I have a feeling. Um, I can't wait to catch a jaint on this wood punker. What accent is that? Um, my accent? My accent would be uh, Western Kentucky. Um, part Tennessee. So... <clears throat> Before I get off here, I got about 30 or 20 minutes left. Let's go over some other stuff I got that wasn't sent to me um, that I got to purchase this week. A lot of guys ask me about a bunch of different things, and um, I haven't been able to have them. So I'm at Bass Pro Shops. I took them off. I, I went and got it. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what Earl's got. What's up, James? Jordan, go, Vols, baby. Hopefully our head coach, Jeremy Pruitt, remembers how to recruit because I'm getting kind of worried um, that we're not even going to have enough people to play football at the pace he's going. What's up, Hank Snow? Hey, man, I apologize. We're going to get some more more videos. Uh, i got to get this Brad Knight jig skipping video out. But So uh, I, did, I did load up on some of my favorite worms. Uh, Y'all know I love me some Zoom Mag Trick Worms. Got me some plum ones. Uh, the hard to get California 420 Red Bug. And uh, got me some plum apple. I got these here locally. Gotta have these Mag Tricks. Super versatile. Great shaky head worm, great Nico rig worm, floating worm, whatever you want to use. I like to fish these uh, mag trick worms on a Nico rig uh, or a ball head, shaky head for the most part. Um, that's how I've had my best success. Matter of fact, I got one rigged up right here. Um, I've caught a lot of big fish on this rig. This is a plum uh, mag trick worm. This is a I believe quarter ounce Picasso shakedown head. Uh, when the current is basically low to no current, that's what I'll use right there. I know it's a small hook, it's a lot wire, but it gets them really good. Uh, my fishing partner can tell you I've caught some janks on this thing right here. And I fish this super slow. It might take me four to five minutes to get a cast in. Now when I start pulling some current and really moving water, I'll go up to a bigger, heavier head, kind of like the hog farmer or strike king structure head, and, and throw this. But for the most part, on the weekends, there's not a lot of current out here, so I'll go finesse on the head with that bigger worm. I get a lot of big bites. If you get up toward Kingsport, Tennessee, I have seven lakes within a half hour. Awesome. i, I got a good friend that lives in Kingsport. I don't throw those on a wobble head, but I will like the bull worms, and I like putting big creature baits on the wobble head out deep. And uh, I also like that uh, the six cents divine shaky head when I'm around a lot of brush piles. Uh, it, or actually, I like it really better around stumps. It don't hang up as bad. The ball head does hang in stumps. In brush, it seems to come through brush really good. But you get around a stump and that ball head, it, it don't work. I do have a swimming pool, James, and it's the color of Kentucky Lake right now. I got a part that's broken, and as soon as I fix that part, we're going to do some demos out there in the pool. I'll, I'll just take the whole webcam and laptop out there, and we'll do some pool demos. But uh, so this is another. So this is a bait uh, I got at uh, Bass Pro Shop, and I put this up on Instagram. And I didn't realize how micro small this was when I bought it. But this is the Ike's Micro Jig from Missile Baits. And it is literally the size of a spider. It is basically a crappie jig with a bass skirt on it. I don't know if my camera even focused on that right there. But you see how small it is? And there's the hook. Itty bitty guy. So what I'm trying to debate on on this thing is what trailer so I had a lot of good suggestions on Instagram but I don't think they realize how small this thing really is so I'm gonna do a little modifications I think a tiny pack of craw is gonna be close if not I'm gonna just put a little TRD on the back of that guy that's right Mark 
TRD Craw is probably what I'm going to go with. But what's cool about these guys, um, if you'll notice here, under the eyelet of that hook, we can focus. Can we focus camera? There's a little hole right there. And that hole is for... They put these in the packet, your own weed guard. So if you want to make them non-weedless, you can glue in that little weed guard. So I personally think this is going to be an awesome bait for super highly pressured fish and places I like to fish. They're super skinny water and you know uh, river creek fishing it's going to be the deal. Those little small mouths should eat this thing up. So as much as I like big baits. That's pretty pumped to get these little missile micro jigs. This is going to go in the finesse box for sure. I'm basically going to have to have me a dedicated Ned Rig micro finesse box. I never thought I would say that years ago. Living on Kentucky Lake now, I've got micro bait box. What's a good rod for deep diving crankbait? Six cents, C20, 25. Uh, Dobbins Champion. 805 I like a little bit softer a lot of guys throw 806 I like them softer I throw a G Loomis 959 DD uh, that's a 711 uh, heavy uh, it's actually extra heavy but it's moderate fast and uh, I'll be honest Loomis makes one of the best crankbait blanks in the world um, I like a champ. I like the Dobbins Champ 805 uh, CB. Uh, I really think a lot of guys use too stiff a rod on those big deep diving crankbaits, and you tend to lose a few fish. Uh, what color trailer did I put on the Baxter Bug? A uh, Summer Crawl. Um, whether that's a net bait, big bite baits. Uh, I use like a green pumpkin with chartreuse on Baxter's Bug. Wow, there you go, Jesse. There's a little tackle hack for you guys. Uh, six cents, that 7-Eleven Six Cents Lux rod's a really good deep diving crankbait rod for the money too. Um, the dial with the two elite eight footer rod, uh, it handle those C20s. Uh, it's a little light for the C25, so that's that's the big issue. There's a big difference between a 6XD and then a 10XD or a C20 and a C25. Just the amount of depth uh, they dive and the weight of the bait. So you, I personally have a rod for throwing uh, crankbaits that dive 10 to 15 feet, and then 15 to 20, and then 20 plus. Uh, you get away with a seven foot cranking rod, which you throw a square bill on something like a, a C10 or a DT10, stuff like that. Um, I'll throw a 5XD on my square bill rod. But then once you get up to 6XD, you've got to lengthen your rod out to get that bait out there farther to make a, a longer cast because it doesn't matter if your crankbait dives 25 feet if you can only cast 20 yards it's not going to have enough uh, you're not going to be able to reel it long enough for it to get that maximum depth so that longer rod on those big crankbaits is really key because you've got to launch that thing way out there dude Jesse Wiggins is a hammer man good dude super nice guy I'm glad to see him with Jackal Baits too. I, I actually met him at the Jackal booth at iCast last year and, and we talked uh, and uh, he's good friends with a friend of mine, Mr. Dustin Connell, and uh, we talked quite a bit and he just loves fishing and I really like Jesse Wiggins. Awesome dude. The Abu Garcia Vendetta is not bad and believe it or not the Veritas cranking rods for 99 bucks are pretty sweet. I'll be honest with you guys. What else do I got here from the shop of Bass Pro? Oh, you know I like plum, and I just happened to find these guys. These are hard to find, and I used to get these all the time. This is a plum crazy old monster. So it's a plum, and it's got some bright blue, and it's got gold flake in that. Hard to find this. I had some mag tricks in this color at one time, and I can't find them anymore. I might have to hit up on Matt Birch to see if he can't uh, find that secret Zoom catalog. 
Oh yeah, and I did it again. Strike King Mega Dog. So there's a reason. Uh, I want to make a video talking about these big giant uh, Mega Topwaters. The differences between the Mega Dog, the Mega Bass, the Lunker Punker. And I had to get me a big Mega Dog. Because I got one and then I did an awesome giveaway. And somebody got their own Mega Dog. But I used to have the prototype number one of this, but I had to give it back. But that was a bait I got a lot of good input on. Let's see what else I've got here. What time of year do plum and grape worms best? Uh, I throw plum grape worms from about May to September. Uh, plum, plum crazy, grape, tequila sunrise. Basically, what you're looking for is a good shade of red and a darker color. Uh, now, when the water really clears up, I'll go to my green pumpkins, my watermelons. Uh, stuff like that. I actually throw watermelon blue quite a bit. Uh, blue fleck, plum, red shed, tequila sunrise. You just can't. Those colors are great. Um, and then clearer water, I'll do your green pumpkin, green pumpkin magic, watermelons, stuff like that. Yes, that zoom color was plum crazy. Brad, I wonder if they sell to individuals or they just sell to dealers. Uh, I've called Miss Judy before. She's she's nice. I always catch them on blue fleck on Barkley, Jamie, but I, uh, my dad has caught so many bass on a red shad culprit worm. Um, believe it or not, that is the number one selling color of all time for Zoom, is red shad. Or that was uh, a couple years ago, according to Terry Bolton. Of course, Terry knows new uh, Mr. Ed Chambers, who passed away uh, last year uh, very well. Uh, Ed Chambers, founder of Zoom, and he said, believe it or not, Red Shad is the number one seller. And I can see that. It's very common. It's in every Walmart. It's in every tackle shop. It's a popular color known everywhere. I would actually guess pumpkin seed, but... Awesome, Brad. I'm going to check it out. What can de dishes do? I like using Red Shad. Uh... I personally don't use it a lot. I just use plum, but my dad would use it all year round and catch them. I think, um, obviously, Kentucky Lake, up until the last few years, was not very clear. And I think uh, one thing that that color does is cast a pretty good shadow out. And it's dark. It, it's easy for them to find them. You can throw that color at night and throw it in the day. Just a great all-around color. Let's see here. What else did I get? Oh yeah, another one from Zoom. A lot of guys uh, been asking me about it. And again, here we are again, finesse baits. This is the Zoom beatdown worm. And yes, I did give them some flack uh, for basically trying to make their own copying the TRD, but. So I got this thing in my hand. There is some differences. Obviously, the plastic formula is different. This is the beat down. This is California 420. I really like this color, by the way. It's kind of a... It's not black and red. When it hits the water, it, you'll see the green. It's kind of a translucent black and red. But on first glance, as I pull these out of the package, it is thinner than a TRD. Uh, it's a little bit longer. It's not as fat. Um, it's almost like they took a mag finesse worm and, and cut it down one thing about this worm there is no salt in these there's no salt at all it says super salt plus I'm gonna take a bite there ain't no salt in those worms so when you take the salt out of these zoom uh, beat downs it's gonna have a tendency to float now because salt actually makes bait sink so that's pretty cool little bait I'll give it to Zoom. The pictures I seen didn't do it justice. I thought it was pretty much a, a knock knock of the TRD. And to be honest, who's not making a TRD? Where can you find the Lucky Strike Ringer at? Um, Google Lucky Strike Ringworm. Uh, I used to sell them uh, where I used to work at, uh, but they're hard to hard to get. Lucky Strike sells them on their website. Uh, I wish I knew the name of that. Send James Watson a DM. Say, yo, I need some ringworms. Bateman told me to bother you. Uh, I love the ringworm. I am running low, low, low. I've got like 10 packs of plum left. I need like 50. 
Um, let's see what else they got in here. Big jackhammer. So this is an ounce and a quarter jackhammer. And I had, I am going to throw this out deep. So a lot of guys throw a Picasso shock blade, which is a big giant bladed jig. Well, I wanted a, something heavy and compact. So now I've got an ounce and a quarter uh, jackhammer. I'm going to pair that up with those white eye spunk shed. I think this is something they haven't seen out deep. They've seen those big shock blades and stuff like that. It's going to be even better. Yeah, a lot of people have forgot about pumpkin seed. That is true. That's true. That's one of the probably one of the original colors I grew up throwing. Uh, cotton candy, pumpkin seed, and red shad. Uh, until I got about ten, I really started experimenting. Which buka swim bait? Uh, I've got plenty. I've thrown the bull shads for years. The four by fours, the wake baits. Uh, I need to throw his new glide gill. Uh, so. Book is a great dude, man. He he's he is. I've known him forever. Uh, I talk to him about anything. I can talk to him about New Orleans Saints football. I can talk to him about life. I can talk to him about anything. Dude, this jackhammer is is the deal as far as vibration. Chris, that ringworm is too small. We're talking about a nine and a half inch ribbon tail, uh, the Lucky Strike ringer. It is. Uh, it's sick. Now, I do know that uh, my boy Philip over at Six Sense has been designing a ribbon tail. I told him if he could take a power worm and a rib uh, power worm and a ring worm and put their own spin on it, you'd have the best worm ever made. So, Let's see here. What else did I get? So a lot of guys asked me about this. Uh, this is a Z-Man cross-eye football jig, and uh, it's pretty cool looking. Uh, to be honest with you, but what's unique about this jig is look at this weed guard. Uh, it's actually a plastic style weed gu guard that I just popped out. You can actually take the weed guard out, and uh, you've got this nice. This one cool thing about this jig I like. I'm gonna tell you right off the bat. I just first time got it out of the package. It doesn't have a tuna hook. It's a nice light wire hook. It does have a bait keeper. Uh, got those little eyes on it. I love that straight shank lot wire hook for out deep You're going to catch hook up with bass a lot better going to keep them on But it's got a removable weed guard, which I find pretty unique. Uh, I guess if you want it You can just put a little dab of super glue stick it right in there So now you got this little two-pronged weed guard, so I like that. Love the hook keeper. That's a sweet looking little jig. Got me a little green pumpkin purple. Again, you can take that weed guard out and you can put it back in. Hit it with some, a dab of super glue and be good. Hit the dab. My son can do that so much better. So I'm looking forward to throwing that. That's the Z-Man uh, football jig. And um uh, it's the cross eyes football jig and uh, David Walker designed that so David Walker is a heck of a jig fisherman so uh, I like that going to throw that a little bit test it out um, dude I love six cents products uh, I've got a special code with six cents mark it's called bait man anybody can use it anytime 10% off in my honest opinion I love strike king I love Rapala I love six cents um, six cents, um, I think has the best custom paint jobs or best paint jobs right now in the game, especially when it comes to their shad patterns, their bluegill patterns, and just off the wall that not a lot of people are thinking about. Um, their hard baits are top notch, man. Um, that's not taking any credit away from Strike King or anybody because, man, I'll be real honest with you. I catch a lot of fish on a 5XD and a 6XD and the 10XD, and I will still throw them, always will. Uh, but now I always have a 6 cents plug tied on. And, uh, dude, I caught so many fish on that Quake 70 in the spring. Um, I'm not trying to sell you on them, but they also make cool apparel. I'm not going to lie. Their stuff looks really good. So I buy it because it looks good. But I won't ever replace the Strike King in 
dude, what Casey's cool, man. He said, hey, man, if you want to promote Six Sense, that's fine, but you use our baits, and that's more, you're authentic. And that means more to me that you pick up our stuff when you pick up all these other guys, uh, crankbaits and stuff. And that's how I feel about it. I don't, I'm not going to promote something. I'm not going to talk about something. I'm not going to work with a company that they just give me 10% off in a patch. You know, I can wear any hat I want to any day, but I'm blessed that Casey reached out to me and he knew I was already using his stuff. So, hey man, let's put this bait bo man box together. And I'm really excited about it. Lots of fish on top around Paris, but they're dead. Yeah, Triton Owners was in town, so I heard. Yes, bass will be on the bottom. Um, some fish are going to be suspended. The bass here on our lake are post-spawn, so they're trying to feed. But i got about 10 minutes, guys, and I've got to wrap it up. So I'm going to fly through this real quick. Uh, I bought these, again... If you've ever watched this show, I love the VMC Weedless Nico. Uh, great hook. Great, great hook. And they're like three bucks for that pack. Hey, man, I love their jigs too, Mark. Next time you order from SixCentsFishing.com, use my code BAITMAN. Got that Father's Day sale going on this weekend too. I'm not a lawyer or an attorney, James, but that's who I would go to. Um... I've heard anywhere between $1,500 and $2,000. I don't know. I'm never trying to patent anything. Uh, got me another Missile uh, Baits uh, product. This is the Headbanger Jig. And it's kind of a hybrid um, jig. Kind of like the the uh, Six Cents Hybrid Jig. Not quite a football jig. Not quite an Arky Jig. Uh, I want to try this one out. So I grabbed me one of these. Didn't have a lot of color selection. So can't ever go wrong with Green Pumpkin. Um, it's got a super sharp hook in it. A lot of guys asking about this bait right here. A lot of guys asking. This is the Booyah Melee. So I grabbed one. This is like nine bucks. So, uh, I'm going to throw this around. It definitely looks cool. It's very unique. I do not like the packaging. I think the packaging makes it like cheap and something you grab off the shelf at the dollar store. So that is a negative. Because I'm a marketing guy and a sales guy, and it's hard to sell baits that are nine bucks when you got it in a ten cent package. Um, would you rather throw a T rig over a jig right now? Just depends on what the fish are doing. I usually fish a, a Texas rig when those bass are really uh, a little bit more aggressive or they're in brush piles. Um, I like a jig when there's a lot more current. Uh, believe it or not, because it holds the bottom better. Um, Got let the bass tell you. I mean, there's days that I'm telling you the conditions can be the same, and on a Monday they bite a worm good, and then on Tuesday it's a jig. Uh, I do like throwing a jig more around full moons uh, because the crawfish seem to be moving around, and I do like a jig when I'm around a lot more rockier stuff. Heck yeah, man. When thinking of throwing a swim jig with a rage crawl or other creature bait this time of year, I like a rage menace on the back of a swim jig. So let's see what else I got. Oh man, this was the last pack they had of these things right here. I'm pumped. This is that Z Man Bang Sticks. And uh, what's cool is this is a new color called Mood Ring. Look here. I got to get me some of them Z Man Nico weights. I've got big plans for this guy right here. Uh huh. So, I'm starting to really like the Z Man stuff more and more. The, the TRD's got me, but I mean, that jig, I've got, I've had this from since I cast last year, hadn't thrown it yet. The Z Man sling blades, uh, they really carve out a great niche in the industry, and they make making some good power moves. Awesome, Gary. I appreciate it. I do need to trademark Jaints. Man, I'm seeing people use it. And uh, I'm not going to lie, I got really pissed off last year when this kayak co clothing company, and I'm not going to mention their name, I'm cool with them now, they put out there that they had their new Jaints apparel and talking about how they trademark, they didn't trademark, they, they created the name and all that. And I just called them out and said, no, y'all are watching my live streams and seeing me say Jaint for two years. Don't blow that smoke up my, you know what. And 
But I talked to the guy. It's cool. Uh, my hair is not cool. And uh, I'm going I'm to I'm have to do that. Got me a little Mega Bass Dark Sleeper. I had one. I was out. Believe it or not, Mega Bass does price right at Bass Pro. I don't know. I'd love to see Rapala do that. What pound test you're using for those finesse jigs like the one on your recent Facebook? A uh, 15 pound Sunline Assassin. Now, I did get some swim baits at Bass Pro. And uh, I don't know if many guys knew this, but Berkeley now makes the hollow belly again. And this was one of my favorite hollow bellies, not named the Bass Tricks. But now, so I got me some of these Berkeley hollow bellies. This is the 5 inch. These work. Um, they're hard to find other than Tackle Warehouse. No one around here locally carries these things. So um, they swim really good. Um, nothing's a bass tricks, but these in the Six Sense Core X and Zoom Swimmer are the best uh, hollow bodies out there, not named a bass tricks. And uh, the problem about bass tricks is what makes them really, really good is they're super, super soft. Unfortunately, when they're super, super soft, they tear up after like one fish. So uh, when I'm out practicing or goofing off, I use like a Zoom Swimmer or uh, that Power Belly or the, the Six Inch Core is a good one. Uh, matter of fact, Matt Robertson that's always on the show, he swears that's the best Six Inch Hollow Belly uh, out there. Um, but then they have a different action than, you know, than the Scottsboro Tackle Swim Bait. So I feel like the Scottsboro is a little bit more subtle. Um, once there's a lot of pressure out there, that's when I started catching them on that. So, and Scottsboro has a meteor profile. They definitely don't tear up very easy. Z-Man plastics are big time here in Florida in the freshwater. I, I would imagine. Dude, Dark Sleeper is legit. Um, I'm hoping I can get up north eventually, but I've got some good ideas. I wish they would make a 5-inch a uh, dark sleeper like a size bigger uh, than the one they got. I think it would be awesome. Just a little bit bigger profile because that hook's legit. I rigged most of those on a custom swim bait head. Uh, I don't have one out here, but that's for another video another day. I've got to, I got to be honest with you guys, I am going to have to go to work. So I'm kind of rushing through this cleanup process. Uh, I do have a video, Joe, on my page. It's about two years old, how to rig hollow belly swim baits. For the most part, I'm still doing the same things, but I've got some new heads and stuff I try to use. Um, I use a beast hook in eight foot of water or less. When I'm fishing deeper than eight foot, I use a, I just use whatever style swim bait head. Six cents, divine uh, swim bait head's really good. But uh, on hollow bellies, I really don't use a screw lock much. I like screw locks on solid heads. Um, but uh, anyways, guys, I appreciate you very much for joining me tonight uh, on YouTube. Uh, I'm glad we could get uh, Tackle Tuesday uh, back going. We had about 130, 140 people online tonight at one time. And uh, I'm pumped to see you guys again. But I have to go back to work. I've got to make that money. Uh, my son is, he's out of school, graduated kindergarten, so now he's eating up all the food up in my house. And it costs some money to feed that kid. So, If you had to use one bait company for plastics and crankbaits, who would it be? If it was just an all-around uh, one company, I would have to go Strike King. Uh, just because they can cover everything. And they're great people and... There's nothing they make I wouldn't use or don't use. I mean, um, just keeping it real with you. Um, no, I like Six Cents, and I don't think Casey has a problem with me saying that. Uh, but their specialty is hard baits right now. But I'm excited about their soft plastics. But um, you know, I've used Strike King for a long time. I pay for it just like everybody else. And they've sent me some care packages. And hopefully uh, they're going to send... Uh, a couple to me this year and we're gonna do some giveaways and uh, I just want guys to catch fish that's it so uh, Matt Robertson will be joining me Thursday night at six o'clock come back here on the stream meet mr. Arnold he just put seventeen thousand dollars in his pocket 
and he's going to teach you some big bait tricks and i'm sure he's got some stuff up his sleeve so guys uh saturday night live we'll have another live stream saturday night and uh we'll, i got to do the ledge bait show, and we'll just go through that. So, guys, thank you so much uh, for joining again. I've got to get to work. And uh, you guys uh, that are fathers, if you don't come on here, have a great Father's Day. Totally means different to me now that I'm a dad. And, uh, you know, guys, have a good evening. God bless each and every one of you. hope you've all uh, had great things happening to you.